What's happening guys, this is James Blonde, this time we're taking a first look at Gundog, a third person shooter wrapped around a trading card game published by OG Planet. Now, it's a couple days before the closed beta and I've got some of the game developers here to show us around, so if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself real quick. Hey, how's it going? My name is Blaze, I'm a producer here on Gundog here at OG Planet. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us here. So tell us a little bit about Gundog. It's it's primarily a shooter that looks like Team Fortress and also a trading card game. Like, tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, basically, uh, what, what we have here is a game that's kind of a uh, class-based uh, team shooter. You know, not too similar from your kind of Team Fortress or uh, Battle for Your Heroes kind of mold. But uh, we've tied in some uh, card uh, like cl uh, card collection elements from uh, collectible card games. So uh, basically, the all that we have all hold a bunch of different characters that you can collect with um, through playing the game you know and earning your currency and everything uh, and the characters all have special skills that impact the battle on um, there's six different classes right now we're gonna be looking at more and we're running the closed beta this weekend April 4th to 8th sweet so I'm here in the shop where you can purchase the class cards and it looks like you've got plenty to choose from I guess according to your playstyle and as a card they show off the various stats so I'm assuming you can get different class cards with totally different stats right yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, so basically, I mean, if you look at the regular card tab in the shop, you'll see these guys are all kind of level one cards here. Mm -hmm. They don't have any uh, special skills, uh, and uh, if you just click on one of them, you'll see that their weapons, their health is kind of low and whatnot. Um, but if you go to the pack tab, you'll see that we have these sort of packs for sale. Mm -hmm. And uh, in there, you'll find higher level cards that'll have kind of higher stats, yeah, better versions of the weapons. Uh, for example, the rifleman, uh, the, the higher level rifleman, he uh, kind of has um, a higher firing rate and uh, sometimes or he'll have like a few extra shots in the clip. Uh, in addition to that, they'll have uh, these special skills uh, starting at about the second level. Uh, and these skills allow you to do things like slide around the map, double your defense for a small amount of time. Um, my favorite is a, it's a bone grenade, and when you throw it, the enemy team all runs towards it. Uh, ah. So it's kind of like a taunt grenade, if you will. So I just purchased the A-Pack, and it looks like I got the 541 Rangers Python, oh, yeah. 541 Nacho. What is that? What are we looking at here? Oh, yeah. Tell me about that card. Just yeah, to... so the uh, the 541 is uh, from the, that's the kind of unity's from, uh, okay. and if you take a look on your collection page, um, which you can click at the top, or either that or by clicking view when you open the card, mm -hmm. um, uh, you can see that that uh, you kind of have uh, different uh, uh, regiments that you can collect cards from. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically we're designing the game so if you collect all, all six cards or five cards depending on the regiment, uh, in that regiment there's a bonus card that you can get uh, only from collecting the entire set. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, now you'll see that, um, which one did you say you just got? You I got, got uh, Nacho, right? Nacho, yeah. Yeah, okay, so um, Nacho there, he's a, uh, let's take a look at him here. He's a rifleman class, right? Um, mm -hmm. And you'll see that he has an orange star uh, mm -hmm. next to him. So he's actually a level six card. Um, levels one to five are with the yellow stars and the orange star indicates uh, level six there. Uh, so basically you actually have to earn up to that level in that class before you're gonna be able to use them. Okay. Um, for the beta, we've uh, kind of uh, increased it so only a few matches playing as a, most as a rifleman, you'll be able to level up. Uh, and get to that level fairly soon. Uh, when we roll it out, it'll be a little bit of a more gradual curve, but we'll also have kind of temporary cards that'll help you use more powerful characters to get to those, uh, the, those higher levels. Cool, so you can kind of like collect these cards as you go and um, you level up as you play matches and then a l later on you'll be able to use these cards. Are you able to trade these cards with other players or is, uh, is it something where you just purchase them as you go or what, how does that work out? Oh, right now we have kind of a gifting system involved, uh, and there is a kind of a, uh, a pack recycle card too. So if you get a kind of duplicates of cards you don't want, you can kind of trade three of them in for a card of the whatever class that you want as well. Uh, so that way players don't have to worry about you know getting way too many of the same card or, uh, or anything like that. They can still work towards building their collection. Now, and so I noticed that there's two different factions there. You've got the Union and the Empire. Are there any sort of differences between those two? Is it is it statistical based? Yeah, you're gonna find that there's some small statistical tweaks. Just that um, of the equivalent, uh, say, riflemen on both sides. One of them might have a touch more speed, and the other might have a touch more health. Um, and also the um, the uh, unique collection cards. There's different uh, different characters as well, right? But um, you can kind of collect what you want from each side and uh, just play the side that appeals to you more as well. 
Perfect. So just before we jump right into a match here, you want to go to your storage page, and that allows you to set up which cards you're going to use in battle. Because you can carry up to three cards into battle, uh, and you can switch between them on the fly with the B key uh, in battle. Um, so right now I've got a rocket, uh, rocket man, a rifleman, and a shotgunner set up as my uh, three cards on the Union side. Um, so whatever's in my number one slot uh, on the left there will be what I start as when it first loads, but I can switch between them easily in the game. Okay, so let me go ahead and go to the shop and pick up a couple other, uh, let's see, machine gunner, and let's do a sniper. That, that, that'll work out. <laughs> Yeah, it's really nice because uh, because you can only take three of these classes in the battle. Um, when we get to the sort of competitive clan-based play, uh, it's really going to be a kind of a game of uh, you know knowing your maps and which uh, what strategies your enemy might try to use and what you can do to counter those strategies. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm all loaded up. How about you? Just about. I'm buying it for the union in case I uh, have to change sides here. Oh yeah, right on. All right, let's do this. Ooh, I got sniper from right around the corner. <laughs> yeah, no, I just got dropped from on top of a building there. <laughs> oh man. So right now I'm the machine gun class, but I want to check out the rocketeer class next. Oh, that's one of my favorites. I really like the sort of AOE damage that you can do with that class. Um, and actually, one of my favorite cards in the game has a, a skill that you can use to make the rocket travel at, at much higher speeds. So uh, when you have people lined up, if you flick that skill first, you'll get the rocket right to them and they won't have a chance to dodge. Oh man, that sounds OP as hell. Uh, I'm going to have to try that sometime. Oh yeah. There we go. Oh. <laughs> the machine gunner looks like a bamf. He's all big arms and oh yeah, bulldogs and he can, he can take some damage too. Uh, generally, the machine gunner is pretty much the highest health class, so uh, he's the great. Like if somebody's got to go around that corner first, he's one of the he's one of the guys to do it. Oh. There we go. Oh no! Not when there's a sniper there. around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hot dog. So you have skills in the game too, right? Yeah, that, that's right. Uh, except for these basic level cards that we're starting with here, um, most of the other cards have a, a unique skill that, uh, you know, there's a, kind of a different amounts for different classes, um, and we're constantly adding more, but uh, those are used uh, with the E key when you get them. Um, they can really kind of change the, uh, the tide of battle there. The only level one card that has it is the Medic. He has the revive skill right from the level one card. Ah, uh, okay. So what are some of the skills for the particular classes? Do they vary based on the higher level card or are they just based on the classes? Well, there's kind of, yeah. Um, so uh, first of all, it all depends on the, the card. So, uh, you know, so uh, a, uh, a sniper from one regiment might have a different skill than a sniper from a different regiment in the collection cards. But uh, on top of that too, um, the, the skills kind of have different levels as well. So uh, for example, um, uh, one of the, skills that you find on a lot of sniper cards is sort of invisibility silence mode. Mm -hmm. So you, you put that on and your character becomes transparent and he disappears from the radar. Um, and the higher level your card is and the higher level the skill is, the longer that mode will last. So it'll give you more time to get in a position or flank your enemies there. Gotcha. And is the skill, uh, the skill point, once you acquire that, is it something you have to like kind of build up as you go in the game or it, like it has uh, a no cooldown? Uh, it does have a cooldown. It's uh, it's just like the kind of the dash bar in your lower right. You get a skill bar that's just over that. Uh, and so yeah, the level of the card, the level of the skill on the card, uh, kind of affects how long the it takes for the cooldown to refresh, among other things. Ah, I keep forgetting I want to switch to the rocket class. I finally did that. 
Yeah, you were playing Man. as a machine gunner, machine gunner there. A lot of machine gunners have the uh, the mithril skill, which allows them to turn on a limited time where they're not quite invulnerable, but uh, uh, pretty resistant to shots. So they can go out and tank for a few seconds. Okay. Uh, so it's great to like go out, throw that skill on, uh, you know, uh, get some uh, direct some enemy fire for a minute, and then your shotgunner can come around the corner and start blasting everybody while they're reloading. I'm having to play it safe here. There we go. Headshot. I was uh, I was done running around inside there. So this rifleman here, actually, uh, yeah, the rifleman is is acting as a very good sniper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we've actually had to tone him down, and, and I suspect he'll receive more of the nerf bat in the future. Um, we, we they made him as kind of uh, we made, designed him as the kind of um, you know ideal uh, middle distance character. But uh, so far, our maps are a little tighter than uh, than uh, what we have planned in the pipeline, and uh, the rifleman's ease of ease of aim is just really helping him kind of dominate. Uh, although there are some effective counters to it as well. What different type of game modes do we have in the game right this second? So um, we're playing as just your standard team deathmatch here, but uh, we've got a few different modes as well. Um, we've got a, an occupation mode, uh, which is a sort of, uh, you know, kind of uh, domination or kind of multiple king of the hill mode where there's uh, three objectives and you're trying to capture and hold uh, two of them to score points. Um, and then we also have a, a, a sort of a kind of variation on a sort of capture the flag mode, but uh, or um, uh, where one team is trying to capture the decoder and the other team is trying to defend it. Um, and okay. we also have a kind of a uh, uh, a classic uh, demolition mode as well, where our team has to you know choose which bomb site they're going to press at, plant the bomb, and uh, hold it until it explodes. Mm, yeah, we totally got wrecked there. <laughs> well, yeah, eighty to fifty. See who was carrying it. Music. Yep. Doing big things. All right. All right. So you can see uh, after the match here, you get an uh, there's an MVP award. You can see Music's got it with the flashing bone. So uh, if you're the most valuable player in a match, you get a bunch of extra gold, which is great for purchasing more cards uh, and that sort of thing. Yeah. So there's actually uh, right now, currently, there's up to 11 levels in uh, in each of the classes. Um, so your first five levels are one to five yellow stars, and then we have one to five orange stars that we might change the color on that. And then level 11 is a black star, and that signifies that you've mastered that class. Um, and sort of the best cards for that class are that sort of black star general level. Uh-oh. Because I exchanged my cards out, I only have one to use now. Oh. <laughs> That's not good. I didn't realize good I did that on the union side. Could not get that guy with a shotgun. And I was kind of standing right where, uh, you know, everybody appears. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, speaking of the shotgun class, a lot of the early level shotgun classes have uh, slide as their skill. And yeah. It, 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 what it is is it's kind of like a fast sprint uh, slide. So you're moving forward very fast. Uh, okay. But you're you're low to the ground, so you're kind of like underneath most people's aim, and uh, not only that, but you can shoot while you're doing that. Uh, and it, uh, so at the higher levels of that skill, you can slide around for a good amount of time. So it's possible to walk into a room with three enemies and just kind of slide between them, blasting your shotgun. It feels pretty satisfying when you pull it off. Nice. Uh, Can I get this guy? I'm definitely not any good with a shotgun class. I've been meaning to change it. <laughs> and now I am forever the shotgun class in this in this game. I look like Star Fox. Oh man, I got sniped. Yeah, I like the I like the hair on the uh, the Union shotgunners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. Uh, like Fry from Kicharama almost. Yeah, yeah, just like that, eh? Yeah, it's kind of cool. So for each class on each side, there's kind of a, there a breed, like a sort of a breed of dog that that indicates that class. So even though you're going to get different characters of that class, uh, so they're going to, you know, 
have different outfits and sort of different markings and be different colored dogs, they're still going to be the same breed. So you can still kind of pick out uh, what sort of enemies you're looking at at a glance, you know? So you're not just always kind of questioning what type of person it was who shot you there. Yeah, I can see how that makes that much easier. Yeah. Yeah, and that's sort of way that you can look at the cards as like, uh, you know, sort of skins, but with their own little mods in terms of stats and skills. There we go. Get the guy with the, at least with the grenade. Oh, he just took me down there too. Uh, yeah, gotcha. Oh man, took him down to hardly any health, and he got me. Oh, that's always the worst, eh? Yeah. Sliver kill. Hey, don't worry, someone on your team will come KS you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's good to know that notice that you can see on the right that you do get credit for assists. Um, so that adds into your experience in gold total and... Uh, so if you're that type of guy who just likes like you know setting up the kill, you're still gonna get levels up. You're still gonna get the experience, the gold that you want, uh, if not the glory. Right. Nice to be able to play the class that you want to play and play the part, play the role. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've played so many games where people don't play a, like a stronger class or something that would help with the team just because, you know, either they don't get enough experience when they play that class or, you know, it, it's just uh, the, the sort of balance decisions I think are like really important to make because otherwise what's the point of having six classes if people only play two of them? Right. You got to make them different enough to, to matter. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the sort of thing that we're going to like really take a look at metrics uh, and not, not just player feedback, but also like the, the sort of numbers, you know, what what are the majority of kills coming from? What are the majority of cards that people are using? You know, those sorts of things. And when we take a look at those numbers, we'll be able to kind of maybe massage the, uh, the feel of the classes until we get to a point where, you know, maybe they're not all taken one sixth of the time, but something around that. There we go. Starting to do a little bit of damage here with the shotgun. There we go. What we're really interested to see is that there's a... There, I mean, we've been playing rooms up to 20 people, 10 on each side. Uh -huh. But it's very easy to set up rooms for just uh, as few as... Excuse me, four people for like 2v2 matches. And uh, we're going to be holding tournaments when we get to towards launch. Uh, so we really try to see... The sort of like little little groups of like two teammates, three teammates, four teammates. What sort of class uh, class builds and team comps people are going to come up with? Nice. Oh, I am feeding. I am two and sixteen. <laughs> so all your viewers. We reverse roles now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now all the comments are going to be about how bad I am at the game. No, they love to hate. It's okay. Yeah. Oh it's okay. no, I'll I fell into a way to sleep at night. There you go. I fell into the 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 pit, <laughs> the, uh, the the moat. Oh yeah, and there's only a few stairways up from there too. So. Oh. Oh come on. I just uh, I just had a, sl a sliding shot kind of hold me down. It nice. slide. That machine gunner is kind of a, a, a bigger target, along with the rocket guy, too. Both those guys are kind of bigger targets, a little easier to go after. Yeah, and um, while the machine gunner def generally has a little more health than the other classes, it's not true, really, for the rocket launcher guys. So, uh, because, I mean, they're pretty powerful. They do have the ability to just spit out that AoE damage with those rockets. So, they're, they can be a little brittle. Uh, and because they're a bigger unit, too, they're easier to hit. So if you're a rocket launcher, you really want to just like duck out from cover, let your rocket fly, and like don't watch it. No. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because they already have uh, you know high attack. Why well, have both high attack and high damage? That's kind of exactly. It's kind of OP. Oh man, I got into like a slashing fight. Uh, well, I say slashing fight. He slashed me, and I used my shotgun, and 
It was still kind of fair, but he killed me. <laughs> Let's effectively use that dash. Oh, nice. That guy did a roll. Got some heals going on here. Still haven't quite figured out the range of the shotgun here. There we go. Uh, just about there. Our team's about to about to win it. It's oh weird. yeah, you guys are dominating, right? <laughs> Probably because there's like twice as many on this team as there are in the other. No, it's is GM even? Sleepy is destroying. He's 30 ball and 15. Oh, gosh. And Bandit's 29 and 5. Those guys are carrying. So I didn't notice. I don't know why I haven't noticed this yet, but do any of the other... Um, uh, classes have anything other than a like a pistol besides the medic. Medic has a machine gun. What do, what do some of the other classes have in terms uh, of uh, secondary so weapons? Right now, all the secondary weapons are kind of uh, pistols. Although the um, some of the snipers have like kind of a more, like a kind of a repeater, uh -huh. so it's uh, got a little bit of a more fire range. Gives you a little more some of the higher level sniper cards. So that's uh, it's definitely useful. So that makes a big difference when you know you the enemy bears down in your position. Uh, but we're looking at different stuff coming into the game um, uh, for, for when we run our like next beta and get towards commercial serv service as well. And obviously the uh, higher level cards and stuff like that will have probably different secondaries like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, exactly. Um, nice. And also secondaries, like we're looking at maybe silenced pistols as well for some of the secondaries so you don't get revealed on the map when you shoot those. So that allows you to really get the drop on people and stuff. All right, well the game's looking good and it is a couple days before uh, open beta or closed beta? What do we got here? Yeah, well, this is a for kind of our first round of beta. We wanted to just make sure that anybody who wants to get in can come and play. This is generally where you would have a closed beta, but we're just opening the gates. We want people to come play, give us our feedback from the 4th to the 8th of April here. Uh, just uh, come play, enjoy the game, try some of the stuff out, let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, uh, and that way we can just turn this into the best possible game that we can make. Awesome. Well, guys, that's about all we have to show right now for Gundog. If you're looking for more information about the game, you can head over to their website at gundog.ogplanet.com or check out the game profile at mmoha.com. Then hop into the beta and see what's up. Hey. Thanks for showing us the game. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having us on. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys, for watching. Until next time, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.